Good morning, church. I'm standing behind here. Uh, Amy is traveling in Greece, uh, so our musician is not here today. But we can do this a cappella, right? <laughs> right? So let us stand for our processional hymn uh, and sing together hymn number 95. Hymn number 95. Or 94. Let us stand and sing. Um, I will start. Let us sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Hallelujah, Alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power lives. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Generous God, we give thanks to you for your kindness toward us. Thank you for loving us all and calling us all your children. Help us to recognize our King and to give our lives to peaceful family relationships with all creation. Free us from our self-centeredness and from fear of strangers so that we may meet the Savior in broken humanity even our own. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Please open to our hymn, hymn number 393. 393, Spirit of the Living God. I will start and we will sing together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall In the name of Christ, 
you are forgiven. Amen. Please join with me with our prayer of illumination. It is a good spiritual practice that we pray before we read the Word of God. Gracious God, we are about to read and hear the Word of God proclaimed in this time of worship. When we do so, Lord, please open our hearts, open our minds, so that we can embrace the loving grace that you taught us in the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, reading the Hebrew Bible is Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, from this time on and forevermore. For, this, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous so that the righteous might not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Uh, today's epistle reading is from James chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 and verses 14 through 17. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if, an, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is, in, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made dis distinctions among yourselves and become judges with, with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who, dis, who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the loyal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. If you are willing and able, I invite you to stand for our Gospel reading. Our Gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 7. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. 
She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crops. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. At this time, please open to our uh, the faith we sing, 2152, Change My Heart, O God. And we can do this. <laughs> I will start. Change my heart, O God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Amen. At this time, I want our young disciples to listen carefully and Here's the paper, color and paste that I will give to you. Take a moment to look at the color and paste. What do you think this is? A chair, yes, a chair. And um, and what's the sign on that chair? A heart. That's correct. Yeah. And I I thought of this chair um, a few days ago and thought that maybe we have a chair in our heart too. You know, there's a chair in our heart, and just picture that chair in your heart, and. We think that the person who must sit on this chair in our heart sometimes is worthy of sitting on that chair. And sometimes it could be me, sometimes it could be others, sometimes it could be something that you think is very important. For example, um, playing games could be sitting on that chair, the game, you know, controller could be sitting on that chair in your heart, or uh, like TV could be sitting on that chair instead of you or others, or it could be uh, chocolate sitting on that chair, and there's only one chair in your heart. And this chair represents what's important in your life. And here's what the Bible teaches us, that this chair is not actually for all those games or chocolates or cookies, whatever we want and whatever we desire, we want. Uh, but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes to our hearts and it is no longer we, yourself, sitting on that chair when you truly believe in Jesus. It's Jesus sitting on that chair in your heart. And because you, you follow, you're the young disciples, right? Following Jesus Christ. Because you follow Jesus Christ and what Jesus taught you, love one another, love God, that's where Jesus sits, on your heart, on the chair in your heart. Now, in our epistle reading, we see some mean people who 
think that、uh, the people who sit on the chair should be、uh, some people who are rich, some people who are、uh, strong, you know, with muscles, or some people with uh, with uh, uh, a lot of different talents. But、uh, our epistle reading, James, tells us that is not true. That's not important. What people value, what people think is important, is not important in the eyes of God. What's important is that what is loving. And Jesus says, "No, it's not you or others, or the rich, the the strong, but it's me who should be sitting on the chair in your heart." I knock your door, and you open the door, and I will sit on that chair and call you to love one another, love your friends, love your family, and love your neighbors, and love God with all your strength, all your minds, and all your souls. And that's where、uh, Jesus is calling us to go. Can we do that? Can we can we invite our Jesus to sit on our chair inside of our heart and have that loving heart? Yes, yes. All right, good. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for coming inside of our heart. Now we are the young disciples following Jesus Christ, so we thank you. Thank you for sitting on that chair in our heart. Let us always follow、uh, the way of loving one another, the way of loving God, Lord. Help us to spread the love of Jesus Christ uh, as we uh, continue to uh, move on uh, in this journey of this world. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. At this time, please open to our hymn, hymn number four two zero four two zero. Everyone found it. Okay, we will do this together. Breath of me, breath of God, fill me with life of you. That I. Compassionate God, 
we come here thirsty for your word to learn and relearn what really matters in this world. So please fill us with a desire to be your people and to worship you in truth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I went to this restaurant in Seoul, South Korea. It had so many good reviews when I searched it on my smartphone. And I was so excited to try its delicious food. So I sat down and waited for a waiter to come to my table uh, with a menu. However, no one came. No one came to my table for 30 minutes. So I thought, they must be really busy. And waited for 20 more minutes. After an hour, uh, I got angry. I got angry with their poor service, not checking on me, and asked the person who works there, Excuse me, I'm waiting to order my food. I've been waiting here for an hour. An hour, man. <laughs> Can I please order my food? And the guy was so surprised and said, You didn't order your food? You, you have to order with the machine at the entrance. There's a screen. <laughs> and I saw the machine with the screen at the entrance where people order their food with their hands. And uh, credit card, it's all automatic. And you just hold on to that ticket. <laughs> you get it from the machine. I didn't know that I had to order myself through the machine and not through the waiter. It's a funny story, but it is also funny to think that I was angry the whole time because I thought I will be served. I got mad because I expected that I would be served by a waiter at the restaurant. I thought I deserved to be asked and if and asked by the waiter if everything was all right and if I needed anything. Likewise, we often feel offended when we believe that we deserve something, but are met with silence or rejection. And that happens a lot in our Christian journey of life. Things happen to you, and you don't understand what God is doing. Especially when God is silent and doesn't respond according to our expectations when we are desperately waiting for God's help. We often get angry, frustrated, or confused, or anxious. So sometimes we ask, what are you doing, God? Don't you know that I am going through what I'm going through right now? I'm waiting here, crying out to you for hours, for days, for months, for years. Don't you see that I'm waiting here on my table? In our gospel lesson today, we see a Gentile woman who experiences such silence and rejection from God. She came and bowed down at Jesus' feet and begged him to heal her daughter. But how Jesus responds to the Gentile woman is very shocking. In verse 27, he said to her, Let the children be fed first. For it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is very shocking to many of us because Jesus not only refuses her request, but also implies that she and her daughter are comparable to dogs. And these dogs in the Bible, in the New Testament, is not the dogs that we you know, 
uh, dog lover, lovers raise in our home. Uh, it's the dogs that, you know, that threatens people and uh, they, they do a lot of harms in the neighborhood. Uh, they are wild. And that's what Jesus is referring uh, to when he, he talks about dogs. Jesus is making a derogatory comment to this woman by saying, No, no, no. You don't deserve my healing. You are not the children who should be fed first. You are not a Jew. You are so-called dogs, a Gentile of Syrophoenician region. Of course, we have to understand the biblical background of this Syrophoenician region, where Jezebel, remember, in the Old Testament, the oppressive and murderous Baal worship, worshiper queen came from in the Hebrew Bible. And Jezebel remained forevermore an object lesson for Israel of the disastrous consequences of worshiping false gods. And the region was perceived as an enemy of God's word. Nevertheless, Jesus could have been a bit more sensitive don't you think? Isn't Jesus Father, uh, the one who cares for the oppressed, the outsider, and the vulnerable? What's going on here? This is even more shocking to us because we know this woman is a mother of a child, a child who is sick. This mother is in pain. And you know, uh, parents, when your beloved child is suffering, you feel their pain and even think that you would gladly be sick if it meant your child would be healthy. Jesus should know this. Jesus should know what this mother is going through when her child is suffering. However, what this desperate mother experiences at the feet of Jesus are silence, rejection, and even a hurtful comment. What makes you think you are worthy of asking my healing, you Gentile dogs of Syrophoenician? But the woman does, does not stop here. She answers him in verse 28. Yes, Lord. Yet, yet, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus said to her, For this statement, you may go your way. Your daughter is healed. Here's the difference between this woman and us that we need to learn from this story. Here's why we get angry at God when God is silent and doesn't meet our expectations. It is because we think we are worthy. We think we deserve better. And I've met many unbelievers who say, what has God ever done to me? Isn't God supposed to give me good stuff? I prayed and I tried to go to church, but where's the good stuff? I didn't receive the good stuff. Forget God. But what do we deserve to have God done for us? The idea that we deserve to be served by God rather than we serve for God, is why we get mad and why we get disappointed. However, when this Syrophoenician woman was faced with Jesus' silence and the words that seemed like rejection, she was not upset nor bothered. She didn't have issues with worthiness. She didn't tell him 
I deserve this, Jesus. How dare you not answer me? Hello? I'm here crying out to you. Can you please listen to my words? And where's my third page? Oh, here you go. I've been here forever, crying out to you, Lord. Bring the menu now. Bring the menu of all the blessings and healings that I can order now, you know. Bring them to me and serve me now, because this is me calling you. And you know I'm worthy, right? She doesn't do that. She didn't care about her worthiness, and she couldn't be offended. She just needed Jesus' mercy. And that's all she looked for. Here's what the scripture teaches us today. God doesn't care about our worthiness. When the Syrophoenician woman humbles herself and begs for mercy, we can see that even a former enemy can receive the deliverance and blessing that belongs to God's children. No matter what people say about the woman, we see the radical and gracious nature of God's blessing for her through Jesus. More importantly, this woman kept her faith that Jesus had an answer. She believed if she continues to make her needs known, He's going to do something. She didn't care how long he ignores her or rejects her. She kept her faith in God's love and grace. Dear friends, from time to time, people will judge you for many different reasons. Just like our epistle reading today, James chapter 2, warns the people who show favoritism for the rich and for not, not for the poor at church. It's painful to admit, but sometimes even churchgoers will judge you, whether you're worthy or not, by their own understanding, their concepts of worthiness. However, God doesn't care about our worthiness. God is only the one worthy of praise. No matter how rich we are, how smart we are, and how cool we are, God doesn't care. Please get the worthiness out of your brain and from your heart. And don't let what has happened to you in the past and what people have said to you in the past Poison your faith in God's love and grace. God doesn't care whether you are worthy or not in the eyes of the world. God sees what's in your heart. In fact, Jesus didn't die for us because we deserved him. It was God, loving God, who sent Jesus for us. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you, regardless of your worthiness. His sacrifice was not something you deserve to take for granted. It was God's grace for you. So don't stop believing in that love, even in silence or rejection. No matter what people say about your worthiness, no matter what you think about your worthiness, the Bible tells us that you are loved by God. So my friends, keep your faith, keep your hope in God's love. Like the Syrophoenician woman here in our Gospel reading. Because whether you deserve it or not, 
God loves you and gives you and your child the healing that this world cannot give. Amen. And let us sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ. All praise to you, loving God, through Jesus Christ, who lives among us. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, who makes us one with Christ. Amen. At this time, if you're willing and able, I invite you to stand for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Amen. Please receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you wherever you go. May you experience the true love of Jesus Christ regardless of your worthiness. Go in peace, my friends, knowing that the fierce love of God will never let you go. Amen.